Hello and welcome to Some Dude's Shed. Today we're going to be playing our game of uh, True or False, where we will be telling each other some silly stories from history, trying to figure out if they're real or not. So, uh, who wants to who wants to get started? Well, I'll go first. All righty then. So, are any of you guys familiar with you know? Sort of, you know, I'm sure you have some computer knowledge, yeah. I, I've I've used a computer. So you know, I familiar have. with uh, bits and like binary and. Yeah. All right. Well, basically, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to say this in a way that's maybe easy to just trying to explain it myself. It's quite complicated, but it basically, uh. The universe has the capability to blue screen your computer. Okay, and how does it? Do, how, how does that happen? All right. So, your computer works basically on binary, right? Like bits. So it's like zeros and ones. Right. Right. And because it's all zeros and ones, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have no idea how like sort of computer chips really work. Like if there's like. Uh, you know what the sort of atoms are in it, and you know the you know literally like the tiny molecules and all that stuff. But basically, what ends up happening is, say you have a uh, uh, a code in your computer, right? And it's like one zero one zero, right? All right. Basically, what ends up happening is you get this thing called a co uh, a cosmic ray, right? And it's basically just radiation from space. And it's not just from the sun. It's like from every single star in the universe, basically. Okay. And these are just cosmic rays are just uh, these things that, you know, radiation that just sort of fly back and forward, back and forward throughout the universe. And they're mostly produced by supernovas and supermassive black holes and stuff like that. Uh, basically, what ends up happening here is a cosmic ray heads towards Earth. It hits our atmosphere. And then it kind of, it comes into contact with uh, atoms and molecules in our atmosphere. Um, and it produces basically what's called a flux. Uh, and basically it showers down uh I think what's called secondary radi radiation. So basically, it's things like X rays, protons, uh, neutrons. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Uh, and basically, what ends up happening is those uh, particles end up shooting through your computer. And if it passes through a chip, um, what ends up happening? is it can change the binary from a zero to a one or a one to a zero if that happens. Oh my god. And then you end up in your computer what's called a soft error. So it's basically just an error that like it, it it's just like a small change in the binary, but it doesn't make a huge like it doesn't, you know you know, it's not like gonna completely destroy your computer. But it's just, you know, like a little minor error. Okay, and how do you how do you fix such a terrible thing? Uh, you can't really at sea level. Uh, basically, what ends up happening is, in the average computer, with uh, you know, say per every gigabyte of RAM, in that RAM, every month there will be four bits that will be flipped because of cosmic rays. So four errors a month on average per gigabyte of RAM. So hold on, that's a if it if it's in RAM, then surely just reboot will fix that problem. Well, that's the thing. It, it could happen. Like it could happen to your computer right now, but nothing will happen. Like it could just be like a little tiny error in the code that won't destroy the computer, or it could have like a bad knock-on effect, and then you could end up having a blue screen. Well, it's not very exciting. I thought it was going to like be cosmic radiation would cook your processor or something like that. But, um, well, that's the thing. Uh, sea level, it's about four times, um, four errors a month. But 
that could go up to 300 times in an airplane uh, because the airplane is significantly higher in the sky. It's exposed to more radiation because it's in the higher atmosphere. So it could be getting hit up to 300 times more than four times a month. And uh, if you, like, say, want to severely limit a uh, bit flip, you need to build your computer in a cave or, like, in a lead box. It doesn't sound terribly exciting. Do um, what about what about if your computer's in space without the atmosphere to protect it? Would like um, computers on the space station would they have? have yeah, more, well, they, have it more. I don't know about the space station. Um, I think it does actually in the space station because like even the Curiosity rover is built with that in mind. Um, it's pretty much because it has like a nuclear reactor on board. That's how it's powered. It's pretty much built like, well, it has to be, you know, radiation proof. Mm. And uh, there was a, for example, another story. There's like a plane, I think, that crashed because there's like a bit flip happened and the instruments went apeshit and then they crashed. And another instance, I think there was like a, a video game live streamer called, uh, uh, I think his name was like uh, Dota. Do the tea bag or something? Is it do with a Super Mario on them? I think so. Yeah, it was like a Super Mario, and uh, he like flips up, like the bit flip happens, and uh, basically makes Mario teleport through the floor during this uh, speed run. Well, it sounds possible to me. Um, you know, your your computer basically gets sunstroke and uh, flips a bit. Can you believe it? Bitch. Yep. That's the true or false to the cosmic rays. Flip your bitch. Yeah. Does it flip your bitch and uh, blue screen your computer? <laughs> or can it? It doesn't always happen. It doesn't always blue screen your computer, but it's just like, also as well, no way if you're just sitting there and say your eyes are closed and you see like a flash or like if you're about to go to sleep and you see like a flash in your eye, like, do you ever get that? Just randomly? Um, not that I remember. Well, probably not that's you remember, but like, just like a random flash in your vision. Well, that's actually a, that's actually a, like, a, I think it's like a proton or a, a neutron passing through your uh, eye, your retina, and it pick, your eye picks it up as a flash. <laughs> Pretty cool. So, <laughs> can the universe blue screen your computer? Sure. Uh, it, it, it by sounds... changing the binary code in your uh, processor? It sounds it sounds possible, I um, suppose. Yeah, I remember listening to a podcast about this before, but I can't remember if they con- they hadn't come like like a full fledged conclusion that this actually is a phenomenon. Um, that there I don't really remember. So I'm gonna say true. There he is, Mister Red. When when forwards in time and listen to our podcast. Oh yes. Uh, I haven't got a chance. Right. Um. I'll yeah. I, I'll say true. Yeah, I go to as well. Yeah, it's true. So what has true. what has NASA done to prevent this sort of thing? Uh, they, want, they love to account for everything. Well, they pretty much build all their probes and rovers now to be radiation proof. And uh, anytime they send a rocket up, um, the engines and all their com- are powered by four separate computers. So if one computer has like a soft error, the other three computers back it up. Well, there you go. Lovely. Um, but it's true, even the, the warping, the Mario warping through the floor, um, some guy recreated it by, uh, they worked out what piece of code it was, piece of binary, and they uh, flipped the code in the binary, that would be and a crazy uh, it made a guy work. go through the floor. It would be a crazy amount of work. Those binary codes are gigantic, even for old games. Yeah, in fact, there's a, a video there, of, I'll probably put a link in the description of the video, but that's basically a guy recreated it by just... Uh, Flipping the code himself manually. Uh-huh. Cool. I wonder. I wonder if, uh, like, a game developer who's a little bit rubbish at making a, a well put together game has ever used that as an excuse. Yeah. It's not a glitch. It's cosmic rays. Yeah, it's, it's not a. It's not a glitch. It's not a mistake in my programming. It's it's the sun, cooking my processor. Anyway. Um, Oh, shall we do? Shall we do my story? 
Sure. Well, my story might be a little bit, uh, a little bit close to Mr. Black's heart. I have a feeling it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna sting Mr. Black a little bit more than, more than the average story. So, this story comes from uh, 1975, from the wonderful world of Formula One. So at the uh, at the American Grand Prix in 1975. Um, Jack Lafitte had qualified 21st for Williams, uh, so not not great. But um, while he was while he was getting ready, um, or well, when he gets ready for his races, uh, one thing he'll do is he uh, he'll put he'll put he'll put eye drops uh, in into his eyes to help him help him focus, because when you you're driving that fast, the wind's rushing through your helmet. Be concentrating for an hour and a half, and you you're not blinking as much. So he puts eye drops in to help keep his keep his eyes um, moist uh, during the race. Um, but uh, for this race, uh, somebody had left the um, had left the cleaning fluid for the for the helmet visors on the, on the bench where his eye drops normally are, and he oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> And he en- ended up dropping some, uh, some, some, uh, well, some cleaning fluid to basically straight into his eyes. Um, it, it didn't take long uh, for him to uh, be doubled over in pain with burning eyes, and uh, he had to had to withdraw from the race. And uh, so, so, so there you go. So is it true or false? A guy put the wrong stuff in his eyes. Yeah, basically, did did uh, did did a guy have to withdraw from a rope motor race because he put cleaning fluid in his eyes, thinking it was eye drops? Sure, but but the eye drops not come in like a little eye drop bottle. Hmm. Well, apparently not. Why would you put Why I would you put the motor fluid in it? I think he uh, he must have. I think he must have bought it in bulk. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, he's, he ended up with 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 big with a big bottle of each. I, my only thought is that they um, is that both bottles were unlabeled. Um, what country is the fellow from? Uh, France. Right. And uh, yeah, he it was going to be a, a, a nice normal race, racing around at the back for for Williams. They weren't very good at this point, and uh, ended up half burning his eyes out. It went down in history as the strangest reason, or one of the strangest reasons to retire from a race. Sure, why not? True. Yeah, true. Well, I can say it is true. Um, Rafit accidentally put cleaning fluid in his eyes instead of eye drops. Caused any permanent damage? Um, well, if it did, not very much, because he was he was racing again in, uh, in, a, in the next few weeks. So, so he was fine after a while. Good for him. Yeah, well, he uh, he always he always double checked it afterwards, so he um, he never made the sta- same mistake again. Well, we all we all learn from our mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Anyway, um, so are you aware of sheep? I, I've seen a sheep. Yes, and they uh, go around in a herd, and uh, farmers have to watch over their sheep. Yeah, generally it's a shepherd job. Yeah. Well, could you ever imagine, uh, you know, having to see over the big uh, herd of sheep? And get a nice view of them, and then uh, get an avatacious view of your surroundings and any uh, incoming threats, such as uh, I don't know wol- wolves. Do you think it would be uh, helpful to uh, have an elevated position above your herd of sheep? Yeah, probably. But sheep aren't well, terribly tall; you could see over them normally. Uh, well, some uh, farmers in France uh, thought otherwise, so they uh, got some stilts and a large stick to hold themselves up straight to watch over their sheep. Though in fairness, this uh, particular part of France uh, had a major wolf problem. Also, this is back in like the 18th century, or the 1800s. So um, oh, okay. this, the, there there was a particular wolf problem. Yeah. So they needed to, to be able to see quite far away incoming wolves. So basically, uh, was there farmers who uh, walked around in stilts to watch their sheep? True or false? Stilts? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, what did these stilts look like? Well, do you know what a stilt looks like? Well, it's a long thing. Okay. Well, how how tall were they? I suppose would be the question. Uh, five feet. So their feet would be five feet off the ground. Yep, they were referred to as 
tongas or big legs in English. Five feet, that's ridiculous. Especially if you're if you're herding animals. Which you're yes, be... but this is why this is why they had a large stick to hold themselves up properly. Oh, okay, so they're basically tripods. Well, they could walk around on them. It's just, uh, yeah, they, they needed the third leg. They needed that third leg to stay up. Mr. Black, what do you think would be the uh, the flaw in this invention? Uh, you look silly. Well, in, fr- in front of your sheep, I don't think you'd really worry about that. Um, I'll just get a gun, or, I mean... Or shoot off the wolves, maybe? Yeah. I'm sure farmers, I don't know. farmers generally have guns. Um, I would imagine so, yes. It sounds like more of those things. It's like, you know, like an old wives' tale. Well, it also uh, allowed them to have a greater stride so they could keep pace with the sheep. Because <laughs> pe- sheep are notoriously quick. Ah, yes, of course. Um, now, this is where I think it falls down, literally. Because um, you, you've got these stilts, right? And you're wandering after your sheep. Yes. What happens if you've got a herd of sheep and they're all rushing past your stilts? Surely that's going to knock you over. Oh, you- oh, you're going down on your arse, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's a terrible idea. I think because you got Keep so far, to, you got so far to fall. I'm sure whoever came up with this uh, stilt invention, Mister Gray, is very, very offended by you calling it a terrible idea. It was, it was a long time ago. I don't think I have to worry about that. Um, I don't quite see the. I can't quite see the need for it because you can see if you want an elevated position, you can just stand on a rock. You know, you can have several tall things about the about the field in each corner of the field, and you just walk around and have a look from there. Ah uh, yes, but this is the roaming fields of South France. And then you've got little, you got your stilts, which which don't offer the same grip or balance. So if you're walking along on stilts and you accidentally step on a rock, you're also going on your ass. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say false. I think. Really? These are the people about the marginal line, and we all know how good that was. <laughs> sure, I'm I'm still saying I'm I'm still saying false. It's too impractical. Farmers are practical people. They they wouldn't do that. Um, um. Okay. I feel like saying true just because you said false. You can have some reason behind it, Mister Black. It doesn't sound like something Mister Red would make up. Because it doesn't involve the war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically. No, I'm gonna say false. Actually, I'll say false. Okay. Well, I can tell you it is true. No uh, way. And yes, they do look ridiculous. Oh. Oh wow. And if I was a, if I was a sheep, I would totally want to knock them over. Apparently, that's a recreation from 1936. I like the way you can tell that they're all French because of their hats. Yeah, <laughs> they got French <laughs> on you. <laughs> Makes it nice and easy for us. Well, there you have it. Well, like I say, that was that was pleasant. That was a that was a nice change of uh, change of story for you, Mister Mister Red. Killing, they also um, killing today. <laughs> that uh, they they also uh, pointed out marshland was to help get way through the marshland. But surely, if you just had a big long stick like that in the bottom of your foot, it's, you're just going to get stuck. I like you're going to sink down. You're not going to be able to lift it out again. Maybe it's not deep. Maybe it's it just the idea is to go down and just stand on the bottom. Maybe the foot base is very wide. Give me that. Maybe. Well, you can see the fit base in that photo, and they don't look look it. Again, it's just the same people built the marginal line, so it's that, it's that practical. It's that kind of that kind of mentality. But in fairness, in fairness, was it not Scottish farmer who came up with the ghillie suit? <laughs> the, the ghillie suit. Yes, you know the suit that the big, snipers are famous for. Yeah, the big green, from. the big green yeti things. Yes. But ghillie, then, ghillie suits are. Sensible, they are pretty much invisible, really. Yes, I know. I'm just saying we shouldn't uh, have a go at all farmers, just French farmers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm all. I'm always up for having a go at the French. You know. Anyway, anyway. BWAB. That's, that's all today. I can say. BWAB. Britain wants Aquitaine back. Um, I don't believe you're allowed to say that, Mister Gray. You not. Probably not. I, I I have no idea. It's, it's giving somebody anxiety somewhere. I should, well, I, I I hope so because that means somebody's listening, and that'd be <laughs> terrific. <laughs> um, um, right, we'll end there. And on that Until note, next time. If anybody if anybody's ever used medicine and uh, for for cleaning, uh, please let us know.
Let us know how good it is. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.